Um, so today's synchronous meeting will be optional. If you want to watch this video instead, you could do that. For A day, um, this will be an asynchronous class day since I have uh, a meeting for today. Uh, still send me your remind messages if you have questions about today's presentation. So we're on day uh, 37, completing the square. It's uh, sections uh, 3-12 and 3-13. Uh, your daily quote of the day is, Failure is not an option. It's almost a requirement for innovation, success, and happiness. James Ware Objective. I can complete the square for a degree 2 trinomial, find vertex from completing the square, and solve equations from completing the square. Your central question is, how do I complete the square? On the next slide, go ahead and type your response. How can you strive to become stronger, smarter, and kinder? There's also a video to go with this one. Okay, so let's look at the first example, example one. Complete the square. So we're given an expression 5x squared plus 20x plus something. Now to get this something, we first want to factor out before we complete the square. These both have... Um, These both have, uh, they're both divisible by 5, so we could divide out 5. So then identify A and B. A is 1 because we have 1x squared. B is 4. B over 2A is 4 over 2 times 1. That's 2. Now, I messed up on this picture. It shouldn't be a 2 right there. But what you actually add right here is B over 2A squared. So it'd be you're adding b over 2a squared. So we know that that b over 2a is 2. So it's going to be 2 times 2, 2 to the second power, and that's 4. So we'd have 4 right here. And 5 times 4 is 20. Example 2. Complete the square and distribute. So this one, it's already factored. We have 6 parentheses x squared minus 4x plus 4, which we're trying to find here, equals 10 plus, and we get 24. Now here's how you get those numbers. Uh, for the part that you want to complete the square for, we have a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and then b over 2a is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. This is the negative h value. And then we have b over 2a squared. That's negative 2 times negative 2. That gives you 4. So we'll put 4 right here. Now, the reason why this is not 4 is because we have that 6 out there. 6 times 4 is 24. The reason why we're saying it's complete the square is because we could factor this easily. It's a perfect square trinomial. It would be x minus 2 squared. Because it would be x minus h squared. Example 3. Complete multiple squares, distribute, and combine. So they're already uh, factored out, the a's. But now we have two squares we need to complete to get the other side. So to do the blue one, we identify a, b, uh, b over 2a and b over 2a squared. We get 1, 42, and then 42 divided by 2 is 21. 21 squared is 441. So that would go right here. If you would the factored form, we would write 3 parentheses 
x plus 21 squared. So this 21 comes from right here. This 441 goes right here. It just depends on what the question's asking for. And then we'll get the red one. A is 1, B is 6, B over 2A is 3, B over 2A squared is 9. So if we want to factor this one, we would have negative parentheses y plus 3 squared. And it doesn't matter what the variable is called. It could be called x, y, z, u, whatever you want to call it. Now to get what's on the other side, we need to distribute and combine. So we distribute 3 times 441 is 1,323. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. Uh, combine those to get 1,314. So that would be what you add to the other side. Uh, if you were to graph this one, you would get a special conic section, which um, there is a section in the stages that has that, but you'll learn a lot more about that in pre-cal. Example 4. Complete the square to change to vertex form. So, like those examples from earlier, this is what you would do. So you're given a standard form. What you want to do first is put a blank right here. That's to complete the, the square. So we'll put a blank right here and a blank right here. Identify a, b, b over 2a, b over 2a squared. We get 1, 8, 4, and then 4 times 4 is 16. a was just 1, so we don't have to distribute anything in. So we just have 16 added to both sides of the equation. Now to change it to vertex form, this uh, is a perfect square trinomial now. So if you're to uh, factor it, a times c is 16, b is 8, that's your sum. The two factors that would multiply to give you 16 and add to give you 8 would be 4 and 4 is a perfect square trinomial because it's the same factor for both. x plus 4. It's also your b over 2a value. From there, you'll subtract 16 to the other side to get the y by itself. Now we have the vertex form. a, so your formula is a parentheses x minus h squared plus k equals y, where a is the same a as before, h is the x-coordinate of the vertex, and k is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So from that, we have a equals 1, and vertex is h comma k, which is negative 4 comma negative 5. And you can always graph this to check to see if that's the vertex. So when we look at this next slide, uh, we have a visual model of completing the square. So you have x squared plus bx, and we could uh, break this bx into two equal parts, one-half bx plus one-half bx. As bx because you multiply one-half b times x to get the areas. These are the area models. Now, if you move this rectangle to down here, and you move this rectangle to the side, Notice we almost have a new bigger square than what we started with. But we have to add a little square to complete this big new whole square. That's why it's called completing the square. Now the little square, the dimensions would be uh, this side length 1 half b, 
by that same side length, one half b. So one half b times one half b would be b squared over four. And that would be what you add. Now remember you need to factor out a first so that you don't have to have that a squared there. Um, if you try to keep it in there, it does make things a little bit more complicated. Okay, so on this next slide, slide 10, you're asked to draw this background image in the background image right here. Okay, it says fill in the missing dimensions of the geometric shapes to illustrate completing the square. Write the quadratic expression in vertex form and standard form. So we have 2x times 2x, that would be 4x squared. Now the dimensions of this would be 6 by 2x. Well 6 times 2x is 12x. We want to cut this in half though, so now instead of 6, we're going to have 3. But this will still be 2x. So each of these will be 6x. And then this one is still 4x squared. Now from there, we want to create a bigger square. So if we move this rectangle right here, and this rectangle to the side, Notice we almost have a new uh, square, but we need to add a little square to complete it. So the length of this one would be 3, and the width of this little square would be 3. So we're really adding 9 right here, because 3 times 3 equals 9. Now this length right here was 2x, so we have 2x plus 3, and then we have 2x plus 3 on the other side. So our vertex form would be parentheses x plus not x 2x plus 3, and then squared. Um, there's another way you could do that with the A on the outside. Now, if we factor out the 4 at the beginning, we would have, well, here's, here's what we would have at first. We have 4x squared plus 12x plus something. Factor out the 4 to get 4 parentheses x squared plus 3x plus something. So from there we have b over 2a which is 3 over 2. And then if we square it we get 9 over 4. If you were to multiply that 4 back out, you would get a 9 right here. Now to factor this further, you would have um, x plus the b over 2a. Not b over 2a squared, but just b over 2a. And then square it. And then we have a 4 right here. So either one of these would be acceptable answers. Uh, I didn't mean to write this here. Okay, so we have either 2x plus 3 squared or uh, I'll type this one. So you'd either have 2x plus 3 squared or 4 parentheses x plus 1.5 squared. 1.5 is equivalent to 3 halves. 
Now for the standard form, it would just be 4x squared plus 9x, or not 9x, 12x plus 9. So standard form we have 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. And here are the a, b, b over 2a, and b over 2a squared based on the standard form. That's how we could find this one. With the area model, that would be easy to find this one. So on the actual Nearpod, go ahead and draw a sketch of what we just went over in the video. And then go to the next one. We'll go ahead and do uh, the second one together as well. So number three says, fill in the missing dimensions of the geometric shapes uh, to illustrate completely the square. Write the quadratic expression in vertex form and standard form. So we have 5x and 5x. If you multiply those, you get 25x squared. And we also have 25x squared here. And then on this one, we're looking for the dimensions. So we have 9 by 5x. 9 times 5 is 45. So 45x. So if we were to half these, half of 9 is 4.5. And then we still have 5x right here. So then we get 22.5x and then 22.5x. Now um, we want to complete the square by adding this little square. The dimensions of it will be 4.5. And then this right here is 5x, 5x. So we have 5x plus 4.5 squared. So that's one way we could do it. Um, I forgot the x. There we go. Uh, the other way we could do it is with the, for the standard form is to identify a, b, b over 2a, and b over 2a squared. So let's factor out a, which was uh, 25, and we'll just take that out so we're not going to have the a in this formula. So we have 25, in the parentheses, x squared plus 9 over 5x plus something. So the b would be 9 over 5. And then so b over 2 would be 9 over 10. And then b over 2 squared would be 81 over 100. And if you were to multiply that in, you get 81 over 4. Now, we want to factor this trinomial right here to put it into the vertex form. So this is standard form right here. Now, to put the other vertex form where a is on the outside, we'll just factor this. So we have 25 on the outside, that's our a, and then x, and then plus b over 2a, which is, or b over 2, 9 over 10 squared. And so these are the two different forms that you could have for the vertex. Um, either one is acceptable. Although to easily find the vertex, this one would be a better, a better one. So then we would have our vertex form and then our standard form.
Now a way to get this method, this one using the uh, the picture method, you could just factor out five from each of the sides. So if we have our new box, we could have five parentheses x plus 4.5 over 5. And then we have the same thing for the, the width, 5 parentheses x plus 4.5 over 5. And if you multiply each of these by 2, you get 9 over 10. So you could get the same thing using this method as well. So on your Nearpod, go ahead and uh, try the, the, the third example on your own. On the other two, make sure you do draw out what we went over. Uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing all of your drawings on here. Now slide 13, do the time to climb. As you can see, some people have already started it. See if you could beat their high score of uh, 5,209 points. Okay, now on slide 14, we're deriving the quadratic formula. Solve ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 for x by completing the square. Now we'll do this one together. So we want to identify A, B, and C, which in this case they're just A, B, and C. So now we want to complete the square. So first we will factor out A. So we have A parentheses x squared plus b over a b over a x plus something that we're going to complete the square with plus c equals zero. Now to complete the square we add b over 2a squared and then on the other side we have b over 2a squared, but we also have to multiply by that a. So instead of a squared, it's just going to be a. So we're going to add b squared over 2 times 2 is 4. 4a. Four Next, we will go ahead and subtract c for both sides and rewrite this. Um, we can factor this trinomial into x plus b over 2a squared. Now c is the same thing as c over 1, and we want to make the same denominator, so we'll multiply by the unity fraction for a. So when we rewrite it, we could combine the numerators and the denominators for a. So to isolate the squared part, we'll divide both sides each term by a. So this is going to be 4a squared. To get rid of the square, we want to take the square root of both sides. And this is just an expression, there's no variables there, so, well, there's no x's there. So we have plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, and then all over 4a squared. Now 4a squared is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of a squared is a. So if we rewrite that again, we have x plus b over 2a equals 
plus or minus a square root of the discriminant b squared minus 4ac and then all over 2a. This is our h part. To get the quadratic formula, you just subtract it over. So we'll have x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. From there you could combine these two to make it look more like the quadratic formula. And this is one way to derive the quadratic formula. On this slide, go ahead and go uh, draw a picture summarizing these steps that we just did on completing the square to derive the quadratic formula. Take a moment to watch this very short video, and then at the end, answer the question, how do you feel after watching the video? This slide is all about the quadratic formula versus the low method. So from one of the previous near pods, we had some examples of this. This is just another example of quadratic formula steps and low method steps. Again, you could do either one. It depends on your preference. On this next slide, it wants you to draw this out. So it says change standard form y equals x squared minus 6x plus 2 to the vertex form y equals a x minus h squared plus k and sketch the graph without using technology. Also find the zeros of the function. So it wants you to do this by completing the square. So we have y equals x squared minus 6x plus something, plus 2. And then whatever that something is, we need to add to the other side as well. So a equals 1, b equals negative 6, b over 2a is going to be negative 6 over 3, not 3, negative 6 over 2, and that gives you negative 3. And then b over 2a squared would be negative 3 times negative 3. That's, neg uh, that's positive 9. So we want to add 9 to both sides. We could factor this. And let's, uh, let's subtract that 9 to the other side. So we still have y by itself. So y equals x minus 3 squared minus 7. Now, this negative 3 came from b over 2a. That's your negative h value. Will we combine the square that we add to the other side? with our c, we get the k value. So h comma k is our vertex, and that's 3 comma negative 7. So we'll plot that point on the graph. 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A is positive, so it's going to be facing upwards. And so on. You just connect some lines, sketch the graph. Now, to find the zeros, we set this equal to zero and solve for x. 
Let's do that in a different color here. So we have 0 equals x minus 3 squared minus 7. And instead of multiplying it out, try to get back into standard form or something, we're just going to solve it like we would normally do. Rever inverse operations. So add 7, take the square root of both sides. We take the square root of an expression, you put plus or minus in front of it. And so now you have 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. It's plus 3 because we add that negative 3, we, we move it to the other side, so plus 3 plus 3. The square the square root cancel. So your zeros are x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. If you're to use quadratic formula with this first standard form equation, you should get the same answer. Here's the next one. Change standard form x squared plus 8x plus 21 to the vertex form y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k and sketch the graph without using technology. Also find the zeros of the function. Pause the video. Try this one. Are you ready to check? Uh, go ahead and unpause it. So here's how you would do this one. Complete the square of y equals x squared plus 8x plus something plus 21. And then we'll have that plus something on the other side as well. Or we could actually just have minus that something on this side. Since we want the y to be by itself. So a is 1, b is 8, b over 2a is 8 over 2 equals 4, and then b over 2a squared is going to be 4 times 4. 4 squared is 16. So we're going to add 16 here and subtract 16. Or you could have added it to the other side and then subtracted it. Either way would work. From there you want to factor this trinomial, this perfect square trinomial to get x plus 4, that's your b over 2a squared, and then 21 minus 16, 5. So that would be your vertex form. y equals parentheses x plus 4 squared plus 5. And your zeros, you would set this equal to 0 to solve for the x's, the roots. Subtract 5 for both sides, each expression. We have negative 5 equals x plus 4 squared. Take the square root. You get i square root of 5, or plus or minus i square root of 5, equals x plus 4. Subtract 4 to get your roots. Your zeros would be x equals negative 4 plus or minus i square root of 5. Your vertex would be negative 4 comma positive 5. And it's a positive a so it's going to be opening upwards. Notice the parabola does not cross the x-axis. That's how we can verify that our zeros are imaginary. That it should have that i there. 
Now for this uh, this example right here, go ahead and try this one completely on your own. I'll look forward to seeing your responses later on. You want to change the standard form y equals negative 3x squared minus 24x plus 11 to the vertex form y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k and sketch the graph without using technology. Also find the zeros of the function. So again, try that one on your own and then we'll go to the next slide. So for this slide, I want you to use the vertex form of the parabola to find the equation of the parabola with vertex at 2 comma negative 5 and it contains the point 3 comma 1. Then find the zeros of the function. See if you can fill these in and click done to check your work. You can do that as many times as you need to. Pause the video and try that and then we'll move on to the next slide. Alright, so this slide it wants you to draw it again. It says write the quadratic function of the graph below in vertex form and standard form. Show your steps for finding A. Now, notice it does not cross the x-axis. That means it's going to have imaginary roots. Now, we could easily find h and k. That's just this vertex point 3, 2. So 3 is h, 2 is k. So we could put that into the formula. y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. So we have y equals a parentheses x minus 3 squared plus 2. But we don't know what a is yet. So we'll find some other point that we see, a lattice point, and we'll plug it in for x and y to solve for a. Let's plug in this point, 4 comma 3. So we have 3 equals a, which we don't know yet, parentheses 4 minus 3 squared plus 2. But 4 minus 3 is just 1. 1 squared is 1. a plus 2 equals 3. Subtract 2. 1 equals a. a is not always 1, but in this case it is. So your vertex form would be y equals 1 parentheses x minus 3 squared plus 2. To get your standard form, we do our five-step plan. Expand, box, dis rewrite, distribute, combine. So for expanding, we just have 3 minus 3 repeated twice. The multiplicity is 2. and then plus 2. Okay, use a box or foil to multiply these two out. Do that on the side. Okay, the rows will be the first binomial, x minus 3, and then we have on the top x minus 3. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is a plus 9. Can buy the like terms, we get a minus 6x. So for rewriting, we have, um, well, a is just 1, so we don't even have to have the parentheses anymore, but we'll go ahead and rewrite it anyways. x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 2. We would distribute this in, which 1 times a number is still that number. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 2. And then our last step would be to combine these. 9 plus 2 is 11. So our standard form is y equals x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 2.
plus 11. So go ahead and write what we just did on your Nearpod slide. Now, um, besides completing the square, you can also use the vertex form equation, the formula. We have, uh, we refine the vertex by doing negative b over 2a for your x coordinate, and then plug in that answer into the function to get your k, your y coordinate. So on this slide, go ahead and match each function with this vertex. I'll see how many matches and tries you do. Try your best to get as few tries as possible. Once you've matched the pairs, go ahead and answer these nine questions about more vertex questions. Uh, how do you feel about today's topic? about vertex. Can you explain it to someone? Do you know it? Is it familiar or are you not sure how to do it yet? On slide 26, go ahead and say how you feel about this. And fill out the exit ticket. I know it says day 32. If you haven't already, please fill this out though. And this is a Greek for saying the end.